And here, Dusty Miller describes his position with the board in the early days of Board Namona. The title of Technical Development Supervisor had a very wide connotation. So the first thing I did was, I was told that they, the board were going to let me build an experimental station in Newbridge. In fact, they'd called in an architect. And I started working with him on the design of the experimental station, and what I needed down there. And over the next two years, that was built and we equipped it and I started recruiting staff for it. Not only did I do that, but I, every time something happened in the Board of Importance, I put my nose into it because I had, I had to make sure in my own mind that I was using the most modern technology and uh, information on science and technology to make whatever was happening work better. And it's interesting to note how Dusty Miller recognised the value of the workers in Bordnamona with their skill handed down to them for many generations. And I got to know the people on the bogs. And it struck me very soon that the board were in a very strong position because the tradition in the Midlands had been going on for hundreds of years of hand-cutting turf. So all the families there that were dependent on turf knew, the, knew how to drain a bog, and the board took over all this, and they, the people they used at the ground level were the people that knew bogs and how to handle them, how to cut drains in them without falling in, all that kind of thing. And that gave the board a great strength. So when the board started setting up a, a bog drainage for machine turf, during the, it would take about five or six years for that bog to be set up ready for production. The people they used to cut the drains and to make sure things were going well were the local traditional people who have been working in turf for decades and decades. And decades. No, the, the Russian connection was vital to Board Namona in its early days of growth. The Russian contacts began when Pierce Purcell and uh, Sir Purcell Griffiths uh, went to Russia before Board Namona was formed. And, uh, but I didn't go until 63 to Russia, but Kogan and Andrews went, Andrews went first, and then Kogan, uh, there were the several other visits. But none, none of us, you see, went to Russia, including anyone on the board went to Russia, until nearly 63 because of the Iron Curtain. The Iron Curtain didn't pose a problem, as Dusty Miller explains. So the Iron Curtain came down virtually soon after the war, and uh, of course Bordeaux was just formed, so there, there, no one could get near Russia at all. But we knew what was happening because um, I discovered, I was based in Newbridge, I discovered that they had a turf publication called Turfy and your Problem Shost, which they, uh, and I wrote, uh, I wrote to the uh, Russian embassy, I think it was in London, I think somewhere, maybe in Dublin, to get copies of this turf magazine, and they sent it, even though there was an iron curtain, we used to get this magazine on, in Russian. And I used to get the, the, the son of the local doctor, Roan Tree in Newbridge, uh, could speak Russian, we used to do, do Russian translations for the army. And I get him to translate the chapter headings of this monthly magazine yeah. and let the people in the board know, different departments, and if they wanted anything translated to do the whole thing. Dullymore Briquette Factory before Board Namona took it over. And here Dusty Miller uh, explains how their process of making briquettes worked. We inherited Lullymore. Lullimore was owned by the Peat Fuel Company, a private company, making briquettes from mill peat using a Danish method called the Pico process. And we, we meantime, were developing sod peat mainly. And it was a bit messy because the weather conditions in Ireland weren't, weren't as good as Germany or Russia for drying in the summer. They had better summers than we had. So they were drying turf much better than we were. 
And so, but we kept at it and we kept, we got one, two or three power stations going with the ESB. Uh, but in the meantime, we were developing, improving the middle peak production in Lollimore, uh, and producing our own briquettes. And we, we, we quickly realized, in the ball generally speaking, that the production engineers realized that producing a ton of middle peat on a dry basis was cheaper than producing sub peat. Uh, 